Hello and welcome to the Workforce Connection. The Workforce Connection is a co-production of the Forver Area Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Bristol Community College, and Forver Community Media. Every month, we bring to you the people, the stories, and the positions that are changing all through the area here and how they, and we talk about how they affect the area workforce. And this month is no different. A very interesting show for you that is going to be focused on energy and sustainability. It is an area of employment with a lot of great opportunities and here to help us talk about many of these uh, exciting opportunities and also uh, areas of advancement uh, for people is Jennifer Vincent. Jennifer is the Director of Workforce and Sustainable Initiatives at Bristol Community College with the Workforce and Community Education Center uh, down on Duval Street and probably have some other uh, facilities as well. It's always expanding at BCC. We also have Mike Plasky. He is a energy consultant with MassSave and Paul Raymer, who is a energy efficiency consultant and BPI certified proctor and instructor. We're gonna talk about what that's all about as well. But first, I want to thank all of you for coming on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having thank, us. Thanks, Rob. So, Jen, I'd like to start with you. <clears throat> I'd like to talk about sustainability in general, energy and sustainability. And I guess the first question is, you know, what is the mission at Bristol Community College in addressing energy and sustainability? So when it comes to energy and sustainability, our focus is to support clean energy initiatives in our region, including wind, solar, and weatherization, with weatherization being um, our focus right now. Makes sense. Uh, this show is gonna be airing in January, mm -hmm. and you know the weather is going to turn. I mean, we've had a nice, this dates the show, but we've had a nice December, but uh, we know that it's gonna turn at some point here, and weatherization is probably very meaningful, but it probably is meaningful too, and we're gonna talk about this I know when we speak with Ray, you know, weatherization is not just about the winter time, but it's also about uh, the warmer months too. Mm -hmm. So what is BCC actually doing within the sustainability sector? Well, I was saying that our focus is on weatherization right now. We recently, this past year in early January, became um, one of the one of four uh, building performance institute testing centers in Massachusetts, which is exciting. We're the only one in our region and it's supporting the energy efficiency and weatherization industry, allowing people to come in and become credentialed with a national organization that supports this field. You know, just breaking away for a second here, this is the 50th anniversary of Bristol Community College, and I recall driving in here, actually, I'm parked underneath the canopies, you know, mm -hmm. speaking about sustainability. Yeah. You know, I'm parked underneath the uh, canopies right now. Uh, it's keeping my car dry, mm -hmm. uh, it's raining out. Uh, I mean, that's an element of sustainability as well. Is Absolutely, it not? I mean, Bristol Community College is doing a lot with sustainability, generally speaking. While our focus right now over on Duval Street is working with our weatherization lab, Bristol Community College embraces sustainability in so many ways, including like you talked about the solar canopy Largest including in the state. absolutely and the, the new weed building and as well as we do a lot of recycling and I talked to you about before the composting a lot of people don't know the huge composting bin that we are composting area that we have here at BCC that's utilized and later in the show we're going to talk about some of the farming mm -hmm. uh, elements uh, within st uh, sustainability too absolutely and agriculture talk, and later this is the tease folks but we're going to talk about beekeeping mm -hmm. also <laughs> later in the show which i find to be really fascinating here uh, what are some of the jobs that are related to the sustainability and energy sector uh, that you can receive training at bristol community college and well, you guys can jump in yeah, as well feel free to jump in we, um, we have a lot right now we're doing, we're focusing on training crew chiefs in the weatherization industry, which has been an ongoing discussion with local employers, what's needed in that industry. So that's what we're focusing on there. We do a lot of training around weatherization. We also train entry level um, solar installers as well. What about wind? Because you know there's a lot of talk right now about wind. Uh, I know from my work with the Chamber of Commerce that uh, we're partnering with the New Bedford Area Chamber of Commerce and also with uh, a, well, we're working with uh, uh, Representative Haddad in the Haddad Energy Bill, <coughs> helping to pave the way for a large scale, I mean, I, when I say large scale, like 100 windmills, mm -hmm. large scale uh, wind project off of the uh, 
uh, Buzzards Bay Coast area. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to do that without people who can actually do it? Well, that, you know, that's interesting. We recently, we were training um, in New Bedford, and when with when that didn't go through as we had expected, we've kind of taken a step back, and I know the conversations are going on with the legislature and, and it's everyone. It's very serious, actually, right mm -hmm. now. It's a you very probably know dialogue. more, yes. yeah, <laughs> more than I do about it. I'm waiting to hear what the next step is going to be and what type of training we're going to do. I know we'll be on board, and I know that there's stuff coming down the pipeline, and we'll be at the forefront of it, and I'm excited. It is exciting because this is what we're. This is what the show is all about. Mm -hmm. Is about preparing people to be employable. Mm -hmm. and also to advance mm -hmm. as well and that's you know some of the things that we're going to be talking about here uh, why is a college education beneficial in securing employment within the sustainability and energy field any comments I think. <laughs> well I mean they, they, the sustainability and the energy field is so broad that there are dozens of ways of getting into it, everything from basic fundamentals of installing insulation uh, all the way up to programs like that uh, I, I use the example in my classes of CSI because when, I, when you send people into houses you can analyze all the issues that are going on from fixing uh, I have a friend who actually has tested some of the houses, the houses of Congress uh, with airflow and he gets hired to go down to the Caribbean and look at people who do silly things with their fireplaces in the Caribbean um, all the way up to crawling under the bellies of mobile homes and so the basic fundamental understanding is the same throughout all that stuff. Paul can you and Mike talk about how construction has changed over the last 20 years, 30 years and how it's not just about banging nails anymore? Shh. Well, a couple of things I'll touch on. One, when we're talking about sort of jobs and education, there was a study uh, released uh, about a month ago by the Northeast Energy Efficiency Council. I don't know if you had seen that study at all, uh, but they looked at the, um, the impact of the Green Communities Act of 2008 and the impact that that had on jobs. Uh, and just to sort of summarize a few categories here, you're talking about college education, looking at broad categories of employment, um, banks and credit unions, there's 76 of those involved in, in the Mass A program promoting 0% loans. Uh, there's over 300 uh, construction remodeling home improvement companies uh, that are as a result of, of this act. Mm -hmm. 275 electricians, 39 energy engineer type companies, over se almost 6,000 uh, heating and cooling type companies, HERS Raiders, uh, which is uh, you know, almost another step up from the BPI type of uh, consultants, insulation and air sealing companies working within the Mass A program, about 125. Lighting companies, another 18, and then just other companies involved in energy efficiency, almost 500. When you talk about just banging nails, years ago they just, that's literally what they do, they put the house up and there'd be a lot of breathing going on in that house. Nowadays with the changes in codes and the, uh, the uptick in uh, energy standards, there's a lot more sealing and, and just stopping the airflow within homes and dense packing insulation into walls and uh, the insulation uh, R values have changed of late where they're going from, they've gone from R38 to R49 in attic. So it, it continues to improve and the standards keep improving uh, throughout the state and, and Massachusetts has been rated number one I think the last five years according to the American Council for Energy Efficient Economy throughout the country. And it, just one thing, I, I at the change, I was looking the other day at, we're about to move into the ninth version of the Massachusetts Building Code. And I happened to be looking at the second edition the other day. And in the second edition, you were allowed to blow your heat from your furnace into your attic and simply cut holes in the ceiling to let the air come back down. <laughs> no tightness at all. Wow. <laughs> it's, this is, you know, to me, this is very interesting because clearly uh, education does matter and can help you uh, sustain yourself. And that's actually the next question I have. The follow-up question to this is, what can people who are already employed uh, in uh, construction, in uh, weatherization, do in order to advance? Well, education is the key. Certainly, excelling at your job, because within any job, if you're starting at the, the entry-level position, it's, it's going to be how well you, you know, take the initiative to learn your position. And then looking at what BCC has to offer to take those next steps, you know, crew chief, um, BPI certifications, 
Um, and then from there, uh, working into either further management positions where you're getting some more management type skills where they could pick those up through workforce development programs or even mm -hmm. within programs within Bristol yeah. Community College itself. You know, Jan, I know this is an area that you want to talk about is some of the programs and training offerings that are available at BCC. Mm -hmm. So what do they got? Well, we have, you know, we have a lot of different opportunities available depending on what someone's looking for. So if they're looking for, you know, a degree, they're looking to go into the academic side and, and we have solar programs, we have wind programs. Um, and that would be, you would contact, I was thinking about this earlier, we should have talked to Megan Abella Bowen. She's a great contact on the academic side for people interested in, you know, finding that career path and really getting involved in those programs. On the workforce side, we have the, you know, that's what we're all about. We get people jobs. We get them the training, the short-term training they need to find a job, get their feet wet, and do they like it? Do they want to grow there? And then we have the opportunities that we can bridge them into other programs here at BCC that they're interested in. You're speaking about needs, how does Bristol Community College know and how does the center know that it is actually meeting the standards uh, within the professional industry? We work with employers straight out. I think it's very important and valuable and I know that everyone at BCC is working more and more with local employers to find out what you need, not what we think you need, but what do you actually need. And a good story is, you know, we worked with the Mass Clean Energy Center this past year on a funding opportunity for the BPI Testing Center. And we worked with three different employers. Two were from Fall River, one was from New Bedford. And it was amazing throughout this process to find out that their needs were very different. They were all weatherization companies, but they all had varying needs depending on how big they were, what their focus was, um, so on and so forth. So that was, that was great. And working with employers is the way to really make sure we are meeting the workforce needs and not just training people for jobs that don't exist or that they're not going to be able to be employed. So we're going to take a break in a few minutes here, but just before we do, how does somebody take that first step? You know, I'm interested, I want to secure a position for myself. You frequently people don't know how to take the first step. What is that first step? Go on our website, give us a call. If you go into the website and you just click on workforce, it's going to bring you to our main page with the phone number to call. You know, you can call me, my personal phone number, 774-357-2565, and we'll get you started. It's as simple as that. Very good. Well, we are going to take a break for a public service announcement, and when we come back, I want to take a step back, slow it down a little bit. Let's talk about Mass Save. Uh, I think it's interesting to talk about the Mass Save program, and I want to talk too about the Green Center itself and the things that are going on at the Green Center. So please stay with us, and we'll be right back after this public service announcement. Happy birthday! What a wonderful event this is. 50 fabulous years uh, of Bristol Community College. A, a very modest beginning on, uh, on Durfee Street, uh, one, one building. And uh, look where we've grown now. We're at all corners of Bristol County and New Bedford and Attleboro and Taunton, as well as Fall River. Um, we've grown to be the second largest community college in the state. Uh, and we're very, uh, very proud of all that's been accomplished. It's been a wonderful 50 years when you look back at the difference that Bristol has made in the lives of uh, the members of this uh, whole region, southeastern Massachusetts. And it's absolutely true. We're so proud of our, uh, of our vision statement that we change the world learner by learner. These have been a fabulous 50, 50 years, and I'm very confident that the next 50 will be even greater for Bristol Community College. Hey, welcome back to the Workforce Connection. So before the uh, public service announcement, I said to you that we want to talk a little bit about the Mass Save program. Now here we're, we're flinging out all these acronyms and uh, all these uh, little uh, programs that are going on here, but maybe we should talk with Mike. You know, you know a little bit about Mass Save. What is Mass Save? Mass Save is an organization that's made up of the investor-owned utilities in Massachusetts. So in our particular area, it's Liberty Utilities, National Grid, and Eversource. For those that live on Cape Cod, Cape Cod Light Compact also covers that area for Mass Save. And what does Mass Save do? 
MassSAVE is set up to uh, offer energy efficiency services to residential, multifamily, and commercial customers. Um, so on the residential side, which is primarily my focus, it's, it's geared toward one to four family homes, and it's a service where a auditor or advisor goes into the home, does a top to bottom evaluation, and then based on what's there and what's not there, makes suggestions on improvements to that home. And then for instance, if they need, let's say, insulation work, the Mass A program covers 75% of that up to a cost of $2,000, and also included with that, in many cases, is air sealing at absolutely no cost, which would include a blower door test and then instrument-based air sealing within that home. Now, as I recall working with area contractors, there's an element <coughs> of uh, uh, education involved for them in order to qualify to install Mass Save products, isn't there? Or it, there's an element of uh, certification. All insulation contractors would need to have at least one, and within that company would need to have at least one person BPI certified, as well as having them, you know, crew chief uh, enabled as well. On the advisor side of things, the actual assessor going into that home, um, some of those would get hired into a company, but within six months, they all have to have their BPI certification in order to continue. And that's the perfect segue because I wanted to ask the question, you know, we're all flinging out these terms here. What is BPI certification? BPI is the uh, Building Performance Institute. There are basically two primary uh, certification groups. One is BPI and another is ResNet, which is the Residential Energy Services Network. ResNet does the HERS raters, and BPI is mostly for existing homes, ResNet more for new homes. Why is this certification important? Um, <laughs> because it is. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can't get a job because without it. One of the, th the things would be it establishes a threshold or a baseline yes. of knowledge for, for everyone that goes out there. And, and not everybody that's BPI certified or ResNet certified, you know, coming out of that program is at the top of the game. There's a lot to learn once you get going and using the equipment. Yeah, there's an awful lot to learn. And I think most of the, there was a t period of time a number, about 10 years ago or five years ago where everybody was going out and training people in hotel rooms and that kind of things because it was so much money. And so having good BPI certification with a good course, um, thorough understanding of the fundamentals is truly important for these guys. And that's what I wanted to ask is, you know, what is involved, I know that you know a little bit about this, Paul, because you're an instructor. What do you learn in this type of a course? Well, when I do it, I start with the fundamentals. There's a series of things that everything else is based on, and then we, I elaborate on that day after day uh, through the whole course. Um, they're building science, like asking people why there is there that little sleeve around a, a cup of coffee. Why does that is that enough to keep your hand from burning? Um, why does insulation have to touch the surface that it's insulating? Uh, where does the condensation come from on the windows? All of those are sort of fundamental answers, and I think it's it's just wonderful for me as a teacher to watch the students go through this and begin to see what they're living with every day. I ask them a question like, when you buy a, a hot sandwich, is the foil on the outside or the inside, and why? Kurt, what's the answer? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't tell them the answer. I make them figure it out. Well, this, but this kind of goes back to what we were discussing before the public service announcement, which is the fact that today's construction is not what it was 30, 40 years ago. I mean, there's, I mean, there was science back then, but the science has improved. The technology has improved today. Well, the science has improved, Rob, but it's also become more dangerous. Houses, because they're getting tighter, the margin for error has gotten smaller and smaller. And people ask me all the time, why don't we just build loose houses again? And you just simply can't. The materials are too good, the tools are too good, the codes are too good. And so you can actually kill people um, if the, they don't do it right. If you over tighten the home, there's a whole phenomenon with backdrafting of your flue gases coming back into your home. So if you're over tightening and you don't have the right amount of ventilation and air movement, you can create some serious issues within the home. That's why these standards are important. That's why folks that are going through Paul's classes are, are getting a, an understanding of if they tighten the home too much, we need ventilation. We have to put ventilation. And Paul's really an expert when it comes to ventilation and, and understanding what that needs to do. We can definitely get my attention. <laughs> so how can a candidate who is interested in uh, getting this type of certification do it? You know, what's the connection with BCC? 
So they come to us, our workforce training. We do have, um, we've been looking to run a, a basic installer course, trying to find out what employers need at, at the basic level. Um, our struggle has been what we found with employers is they prefer to find the person, train them at the basic level, and then send them to us for a the more in-depth training or the higher level certifications. So we, we're working closely with them to try to figure it out. We have this great weatherization lab that employers are looking to utilize and come and actually do their own training in their employees with their employees. I think you just read my mind because I was going to ask you, what is up with the Green Center? What is this Green Center down on Duval Street? So our Energy and Sustainability Center, well, the former Green Center, a couple years ago they've changed it. They found that the Green Center scared people. So they changed it now to the Energy and Sustainability Center. I've got to send the memo out to a lot of people, right? Um, so they changed it. That's why it. we have this television That's why we have, yeah, so now everyone knows. Energy and Sustainability Center, it adds to the title though. So down there we have this great weatherization lab where people can come in and do the hands-on work needed to learn the skill and the trade instead of sitting in a classroom and just getting the knowledge but not really applying. And we're actually working together, um, Paul and I are working in, in February with Youth Build, with the local Youth oh, Build. Sure. Yes. They're going to be coming in to um, help yep. build a um, a house right there so we can actually do testing in the lab because right now we're going out to different people's houses and doing the testing there and how great would it be to be able to simulate it in the lab and I know Paul could probably talk more on that. Yeah, no, it's very exciting. We're going to be able to actually, the students will be able to visualize the pressures in the test cabin uh, in the lab and we'll be able, we'll have a combustion uh, testing area where we can make the water heater backdraft and the smoke come down the wrong mm -hmm. way when we turn on the bathroom fans and the air handler and uh, it's a very exciting project. It is amazing what has been put together by Bristol Community College over on the second floor at Commonwealth mm -hmm. Landing. They've I mean, done I a lot. I remember before it was all there. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I remember when it was just an empty building and I mean just the transformation that's happened there. It's amazing. Yes. It is, and I'm just I'm hoping we can grow even more right there. So there is this program that I was reading about for the do-it-yourselfer, you know, the troublemaker. What do, you, what do you have going on at BCC for somebody who uh, wants to learn more about how not to get into trouble uh, mm -hmm. while working on their house. Well, that's that's a really important point because we want to make sure that we're not just training the people that are going out and doing the work, but empowering the homeowners to really understand what the work entails and what can they do on their own and not feel intimidated by the process. We've been working on do-it-yourself um, weatherization for about a year now, just doing the needs assessment, finding out is there interest and what should we be doing. And I actually just um, reached out to Mike Pulaski to help with this and, and to work as an instructor in this course that we're looking to run um, February, March, April time. Well, in my opinion, half the battle is knowing what you don't know. That's it. That's it. So having them come in, I'm really excited to have someone that can say, okay, here's the language, these are what the terms are, this is what you can do in your home. And if you have people come in, you can feel comfortable and confident that you know what they're doing and why. Well, I think back uh, long ago, I had, um, I owned a shopping center and I actually, I purposefully, uh, we did an addition onto the shopping center and I hired a contractor and then worked as a, you know, assistant to the contractor mm -hmm. so I could learn mm -hmm. hands on uh, how, to how to do all this stuff. Because I lived in the area, I, I lived in Jackson Hole, Wyoming and out there people build stuff. Where? At Jackson <laughs> Hole, Wyoming, <laughs> yes. And in the Jackson Hole, Wyoming area, the contractor will build it for you but they don't repair stuff because they're on to the next building project. So when you have a plumbing problem, you're on your own. When you have an electrical problem, you're on your own. So I purposefully, I, I built on an extension to my building and took advantage of working with this individual and in learning how to roof, learning how to mm -hmm. plumb, learning how to uh, uh, install flooring, the whole thing. So. This That's is, important. It's important Exa same thing. It's You're going to own important. a home. You need to know how to maintain your home. Absolutely. And uh, we're hoping with this course that that's what it's going to do for the people in our area to really make them feel like, okay, I know how to do this. I know what we're doing. And um, they can save money. <laughs> yes. There's a lot of money. Well, that's another, that's another aspect of this is by knowing the language, by understanding it, mm -hmm. you also know what you need and what necessarily you don't need. What you don't need. So speaking of needs, one of the... Uh, 
observations that I've made over the years in working with Bristol Community College is the close connection you have with area employers. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, I can say that's an interesting topic whenever, you know, we discuss working with the local employers. BCC is very large and we have a lot of different areas working with employers. And the, the ongoing thing now is we've just created a business uh, engagement task force because what we've been finding is I'll reach out to this employer and they're like, oh, I already work with so-and-so at BCC in a, a completely different area doing something else. So we're trying to really find a way to work together to make sure that we have good rep rep representation across the campuses and we're supporting the employer needs at all different levels. And it's exciting to see, I know that the movement has been towards working with employers. We don't want to prepare people for jobs that aren't there. We're not doing our, we're not being responsible or doing our duty as an educational institution if we're providing all these courses and classes and people are leaving and not finding jobs. And to me, that's the most important thing about working at a community college. We want to get them the skills they need to get the jobs that are there. And the only way to do that is to work with the employers. You know, speaking about things that are needed here, I drive to work every day and I'm passing the Amazon uh, facility, mm -hmm. which is Goliath in size. And I'm thinking to myself, wherever I'm driving around Bristol County, I'm seeing construction and I'm seeing uh, infrastructure projects going up everywhere. I'm seeing expansions and buildings uh, taking place here. Can uh, Paul, you and Mike talk a little bit about the trends that you're starting to observe in the weatherization and the uh, construction business as we close out the show? Sure, well, I mean, there are two, as I said before, there are two organizations, BPI for existing and ResNet for new stuff. And there are 130 million existing houses in this country that all need work and builders keep building new ones in that area. The new code that's coming in in 2016 uh, for Massachusetts uses HERS ratings to about as an alternative path to meeting the code. So HERS raters and BPI certified people are, are critical. And DOE has a new program called HomeScore, which I'm hoping that um, BCC will start to pick up on, uh, which actually gives a score for a house like a miles per gallon rating. Interesting. You have anything to add, Mike? Yeah, from one of the things I'm seeing out there from a, uh, a product standpoint is a lot of people are interested in these uh, ductless mini splits. Uh, many people have probably seen them. Most of the time you see them in a restaurant. It's a wall-mounted air conditioning unit, uh, Mitsubishi, Fujitsu. Uh, those are heat pumps, so they have heat pump technology, and many of those nowadays can heat below zero degrees. And uh, in some of these super tight homes we're talking about, people aren't going with central heating plants anymore. They're going with these ductless mini splits. They're going with PV on the roof, solar hot water, and they're really going off the grid and, and uh, you know, they've really got a self-sustaining home. Net zero is what they call some of these properties. Wow, uh -huh. very interesting. So speaking about interesting, we've got about a minute left. You want me to talk about beekeeping? I want to talk you about beekeeping. I, you did I do. tell them, yes. so we have to yes. throw it out there. What is going on with that? That's just so interesting. So we do. We have a, um, a beekeeping course, and we work with um, the academic area. We have a sustainable agricultural program, certificate program, and there, uh, there is a beekeeping course, and it's for anyone out there who's interested in learning the fundamentals, the principles of beekeeping, either as a hobby or to start your own business. Um, there's been a lot of people who just are recently, I spoke to someone who just saw this the beehive in their backyard and was like, hey, this is interesting, I've never seen this, I wanna learn more about it, and took a beekeeping course, and is now, has now turned it into a business. And um, the honey's just so different than anything that you would ever taste when, from the store. Who knew? Who knew? The foil should be on the outside of the sandwich. That's oh. good. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, and then David. So, uh, as we do close, you, you know, very quickly too, and you have a, uh, a, a gardening we do. Uh, line of courses as well. Absolutely, so along the sustainability area, we have a master gardener program as well as the beekeeping that we've restructured this year. We'll be running in the spring in um, Fall River and Taunton to really promote the local community gardens and school Very gardens. Very good. Well, it goes by so fast. Mm -hmm. This has been a very Always. interesting show and I wanna thank all three of you for being guests today. Now on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce, I want to ask you all to please shop locally whenever you get the opportunity to do so. It really does make a difference. And thanks for walking, watching the Workforce Connection. Very good. Thank you.